Today we're going to do a full body stretch to open up hips and shoulders and the spine. This can be done sitting in a chair or on the floor like I am. Hi and welcome. I'm Beth Graham and if you're new to my channel, click subscribe. And before we get started, I want to thank all the new subscribers that have joined me in the last few months since we've been in lockdown and at home workouts. So a little bit about me real quick, I won't spend too much time, is I'm a alignment-based yoga teacher who started off in the Iyengar tradition in 1994 practicing and teaching in 1997 since. Um, and I'm pretty much an alignment-based yoga teacher, but my husband one time when somebody said, what do you do at a party, said, she's a yoga thing. And he said it in just the sweetest way, meaning she does so much more than yoga. So I'm really excited to be able to help you work with your body to keep it at maximum performance if you're a runner or an athlete or if you've got some aches and pains that you're not feeling great with how to get you back in shape so the best way to do this is through my online program and you can access it through my website bethgrahamwellness.com and in this program what i'm so excited about is to be able to teach students how to do the posture the way it's meant to be done. Because these postures all have specific benefits from practicing them. So, you know, we've all heard about downward facing dog or warrior two and, you know, what's the point in doing this posture? What is the benefit? And so what I teach to is how do we get stronger in the posture? What muscles need to engage? So you could just see when I said engage, I pulled my belly in and I sat up taller. So what muscles need to engage so other muscles can expand and lengthen? What does this do? What does this mean? This is mobility in the body. This is freedom in our body so we can really do what we love to do day to day. So let's get started. We're going to, I'm gonna move these blocks to the side. These blocks, um, non sequitur or Maybe I'm taking a tangent in a different direction. These are hugger mugger blocks. Um, I have an online course that's free on my favorite yoga props and I reference these. Plus my favorite mat is my hugger mugger mat. And believe it or not, I think I bought this mat maybe in 1998 or 1999. So let's get started. My practice mat, I'm going to go off on the tangent again. My practice mat is a jade mat that I take into public spaces because it's really light and easy to carry. So enough about props, enough about the supplies. So what I'm going to ask you to do is sit crisscross applesauce, but here I have my ankles back. I'm going to have you bring your shins forward so they're parallel with the mat even flex your feet a little bit. When we flex the feet, that protects the knee. And in this position, we actually are doing some hip opening. So move the flesh of the seat back and apart so you can feel your sitting bones. Bring your right shin in front to start. And then bring your left hand out to the side. You'll take your right arm and sweep it up and over. As you do that, notice if your right hip lifted, start to press the right hip, the right sitting bone down, and then reach through the right arm. Notice if you're hunched or collapsed forward in your right shoulder. Start to lean back into your right shoulder, reach down through the right hip, Straighten the right elbow as you even look up towards the ceiling. Give yourself another few breaths here, pulling your navel back to spine. 
and then slowly come up. And then just give yourself a moment to notice the length that you experienced on your right side and there was some contraction on the left. Notice how you're breathing in and breathing out. Okay, the right hand, bring it to the left thigh. Take the left hand, I like to say cup it, and bring it behind you. It adds a nice prop. You always have your blocks if you need a little extra support or use a book. So here, before we start to twist, I want you to start to feel yourself ground your right hip, your right sitting bone down, and then pull your navel in and feel the lift of the chest up. So we're tightening up through the front core to protect the low back. Keep driving your right hip down, and on the exhale, you begin to revolve and twist. You can use your right hand against your left leg to almost drive the twist. And then in this twist, each time you inhale, you reach up through the crown of the head, and then each time you exhale, you twist deeper. You'll feel that your left shoulder blade, the left scapula, is firming on your back, and you'll feel your right is almost stretching away. So we're also strengthening the upper back here. Keep pressing right hip down, right sitting bone down. Belly draws in, reach up through the crown of your head, sit tall, and keep your gaze at the horizon. Give yourself another inhale, twist on the exhale, and then next inhale, slowly unwind, slowly. Notice the process of the unwinding. And then give yourself a moment here. Notice what you're experiencing in your body. Just take a breath in and a breath out. And then from the pelvis and thigh bone, tilt forward, so we're hinging forward at the hip, and start to walk your arms forward. Again, this is where you might want blocks to rest your arms. If you're seated in a chair, you can just simply fold forward. So folding forward, notice how the back of the hips maybe get light, press down through your sitting bones, and then draw your navel again into your spine. Tighten your front core. And then notice as soon as you come into the position, if there's this resisting through the outer hip, a tightening. And then just notice your exhale breath. And use your exhale breath to see if you can start to release that tension. And if you're doing this for the first time, it might seem like a foreign concept, but with practice and with time, this awareness of your body, this proprioception will start to take hold. And you'll notice, wow, when I exhale, I can actually start to release through my outer hips. I can let go of this tension or this fight flight reaction in my hips and just relax. Give yourself another few breaths here. And then slowly you'll come up. Keep your arms forward and extended. And then think of downward facing dog. Dial the hands out slightly so your pointer fingers are 12 noon. And then start to pull the chest forward Notice how your belly got soft. Pull your navel in, reach your hips back. So this is a little bit of traction from the spine. By pressing the chest forward and broadening your collarbones, you're engaging your upper back. So if you spend a lot of time looking at a computer, working at a desk, those muscles might be overstretched and weak. And then by doing this, you engage, and it's a nice counter action. Pull your lower belly in, tuck your chin in, look down between your thumbs. Give yourself another inhale and an exhale. And then walk your hands back, 
Bring your hands behind your hips and then simply change the cross of the legs. So again, we don't want the ankles back behind the top of the thigh. Bring the legs forward and as much as parallel of the shins as you can get. And then move the flesh of the seat back and apart. And then just sit up tall and notice the difference of left shin being in front of your right shin. Just notice the two sides. Give yourself a moment, take a breath in and a breath out. Okay, take your right hand, bring it down to the mat, and as soon as you start to lean over to the right, notice that the left hip lifts. Drive the left hip down, reach the left arm up and over, and then keep pressing the left hip down. And again, notice, are you hunching forward? Lean back into your left shoulder, and then Feel yourself reaching through the left elbow and fingers. So a lot of times there's a bent elbow, straighten your elbow, drive your left tip down, and then feel yourself pull your belly in as you're almost leaning into your back thigh. Give yourself another moment in time here. And then you'll slowly come up and just notice, what are you feeling? Take a breath in and a breath out. Taking your left hand, bring it to your right thigh. You'll take your right hand, cup it behind you, and sit tall. So just notice how you can use this cupped right hand as a prop to elongate the spine. Then press the left tip, left sitting bone down, ground it, navel draws in, and on the exhale, you start to twist. So each inhale, you're reaching up, sitting tall, and then each exhale, you're using your left arm against your right thigh as leverage. You're also using your right hand by pressing the fingertips down, and just notice how I can revolve a little deeper by using the strength of my arms. Keep pressing down with your left hip, draw your navel in, reach up through the crown of the head. And then each exhale, you're twisting. So notice here how the right scapula is drawing into the body. And it's almost like the left shoulder blade is being stretched away. So again, we're working through the hips. We're revolving through the spine. We're broadening the right side of the chest. So there's a stretch to the right side as you engage the right shoulder blade. A lot's going on here. Stay here for another inhale. Navel into spine, exhale, you twist. And then slowly notice the unwind. Notice the release. Come back through center. Take a breath in. And a breath out. And then again, the top of the thigh bone in the pelvis creating the hip joint. We're going to hinge forward, bringing your belly down to your legs. And depending, what we want is extension of the spine. So if you feel like you're curling back, see if you can lean a little bit forward with your chest and lengthen your spine. And then start to walk the hands forward. If it feels like that's not happening, that probably just means that you're a little tight in the hips, a little tight in the low back, and just start to do this every day and you'll start to notice some big changes. So we'll keep folding forward. And again, if you're in a chair, just fold forward. Keep your sitting bones, whether you're on a floor or the chair, pressing back and down. And then just give yourself a number of breaths here. Again, assess where you are. So notice what you're feeling in the hips. Notice if there's this automatic reaction to tense when you fold. And start to focus on your exhale breath, pressing your sitting bones down, drawing your navel in, and see if you can release some of that reaction. Give yourself a few more breaths here. 
each exhale, can you fold a little deeper? And then slowly, just come up a bit like we did before, downward facing dog arms. So point your finger towards 12 noon. You're straight through the elbows. You're pressing down through the inner hand and then rotate the crease of the elbow forward. And then feel as if you're isometrically pulling your hands back towards your legs and pressing the heart forward. Again, look between your toes draw your navel in and feel yourself reaching your sitting bones back. There should be a lot of feeling and sensation in your upper back here. You should be feeling the contraction of the scapula. You should feel yourself moving your shoulders from your ears, stabilizing through the back. Keep pulling your belly in and then just give yourself another inhale and an exhale. And then slowly walk your hands back and sit tall. And then give yourself a moment, close your eyes, let your hips, your sitting bones be heavy and feel an updraft of the spine. So feel a lengthening of the spine up through the crown of the head. Draw your lower belly in to support this lift of the spine. And then move the fronts of your arms back and let the tops of the shoulders get heavy and move down. Lengthen from the very base of your skull through the crown of the head. So right at the spot at the back of the neck, base of the skull, up through crown of the head, reach up, sit tall. And then give yourself a moment to take just a few mindful breaths here. And then with your eyes closed, bring your hands into your heart center. Thumbs will rest on the sternum, your breastbone. Nod your chin down to your chest and then blink your eyes open. Just let yourself come back. Take a breath in and a breath out. So until next time, Namaste. Have a wonderful day or evening and drop me a comment below. Let me know what you're working on, what you're practicing and if there's a tutorial that you would like me to do or a pose that you'd like me to incorporate in a short flow. So I'm here to support you and until next time, make it a good one.